Today we begin the journey on the Alaska Highway, from Dawson Creek in British Columbia, through the Yukon, all the way to Delta Junction. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Alaska Highway, Alcan for short, was constructed in 1942 during World War II to connect the lower 48 with what was then the Alaska Territory. It used to be notorious for being a rough, challenging drive, but nowadays it is paved and it seems to be in great condition most of the way. So over the next week we'll be traversing British Columbia, the Yukon and eventually Alaska. Dawson Creek is the beginning of the Alcan, so tomorrow we're going to explore a little bit and then get underway. Got myself some Canadian money. Well, today is going to be mostly utilitarian, you know, I wasn't even going to film anything. But anyway, I went by the bank, got some plastic Canadian money. And now we're here by the Alaska, uh, the famous Alaska Highway sign which, just in case it is raining tomorrow, we're gonna take a picture with it now. Right across the street, propane refill. We need one propane refill, and then we might go by the supermarket. In any case, here we are. I, have a, I feel like today is the day that the, the adventure really begins. And here we are, mile zero of the Alaska Highway. This is actually the official sign the unsafe sign to take it because you, you're in the middle of like a roundabout here but um, yeah here they have the measurements Fairbanks 1523 miles of course we're gonna go a little farther than Fairbanks because the idea is to take the, the Dalton Highway all the way to Dead Horse but yeah it's uh actually, I don't want to get run over but it is actually great to be here let's go the smoke, there's like a hundred meter visibility, or I don't know, I'm just making that up. But there's this bridge that we may not be able to see with the trailer in tow. I mean, we may not even be able to see at all. I don't know if it is closed. It's the, the Kiskatina old bridge, which is like an old wooden bridge. A, let's go see it. The Kiskatina Bridge is one of the original Alaska Highway wooden bridges. Apparently the only one of the original bridges still in use today. The weather is certainly not cooperating. It is rainy and very smoky because of all the nearby wildfires. One can only hope it will improve as we go farther north. I see a sign that says bridge closed, so maybe it is not in use anymore. We are now driving on the old Alaska Highway. Well, I'm glad we came without the trailer because there isn't much of a turnaround. Well, this is the old Alaska Highway and this is the site, and it is obviously closed nowadays, of the old Kiskatina Bridge and uh, I forget, I forget exactly what I read on the milepost, but I believe it is supposed to be uh, the oldest wooden bridge, surviving wooden bridge or something like that here. I don't know if I'm supposed to. It doesn't say anything about no pedestrians, so I'm just gonna go and check it out. This is really cool. Yeah, I see why yeah, they don't allow vehicles anymore. Below us, of course, the Kiskatina River. It is very beautiful out here. And to think that for many years, this was the only way across. Apparently, the bridge is closed because there was a slide in 2021. 
and there is no information on when it might be open once again. Still, it is a unique experience to be here in the presence of Alaska Highway history. As I said before, hopefully tomorrow the smoke will clear and we'll be able to enjoy this iconic drive in full. Well, that was super cool. Now let's go back to to uh, the RV park and get ready for a tomorrow early departure. And tomorrow, since it is gonna be probably the least scenic day of the whole Alaska Highway, I'm gonna put as many miles as possible. Probably, I wanna say 400 miles. Okay, let's get something to eat. We're going to Post and Row. Yeah, this is Post and Row Tap House here in Dawson Creek. Ooh, that's a lot of food. Definitely order too much food, but it was delicious. Anyway, tomorrow the real adventure begins. And this might be the last time it is going to get somewhat dark for the next six weeks or so as we head to the land of the midnight sun. Let's go back to downtown so that we can take another picture with the Alaska Highway sign, this time with Starship and Mini Tini 4 in it. Yesterday there were just too many people with the same idea, but today it is early morning and we're pretty much the only ones here. It is such an iconic place especially in the context of the adventure we're about to embark on. Well, good morning. Today, for the first time in the whole trip, it feels really cold. And the smoke is kind of terrible, but we're here. Mile marker zero of the Alaska Highway. Today, the, the, the greatest adventure, probably the greatest adventure we've ever taken begins of course, I could take three days to get there. We're gonna take about, uh, probably about a week. And of course, some are gonna think that we, I'm still going too fast, but this is it, guys. The beginning of the Alaska Highway. Let's get on the way. And with that, we say goodbye to Smoky Dawson Creek, British Columbia. May the adventure begin. What a smoky and gloomy day. Today is the day we're going to cover the most miles. Mainly because, let's face it, it is not very scenic, even less with this dense smoke everywhere. And here we go, the Alaska Highway. There were certain things we wanted to see here in Dawson Creek, but yesterday the weather was so crummy and with this smoke, you know, there was a pioneer village that seemed nice, but maybe we'll be back someday, like I usually say. Now, the road beckons and Alaska beckons even more, so... Now crossing the Peace River, getting very close to Fort St. John, and our next point of interest. Actually, we're not gonna do anything here in Fort St. John, but a little farther down the road. This is the site of the Alaska Highway Memorial, dedicated to a group of American soldiers who perished at Charlie Lake, here, during the construction of the Alaska Highway. Good. 
here we have the Alaska Highway Monument. Let's go check it out. It is pretty cold, though, let me tell you. It's not cold, it's just windy. There's some Canadian geese. is dedicated to the memory of the United States soldiers lost with the sinking of the U.S. Corps of Engineer pontoon barge on May 14, 1942. All right, let's continue. I think, I think I'm just gonna try to, I mean, there's not as many points of interest on this stretch of road today, so I think I'm gonna try to punch through as far north as possible. See, see if we can get away from all this smoke because it is it's even affecting our throats here. Look at the sun, barely visible through the smoke. There must have been a big fire here recently. I see a glimmer of hope on the horizon. In fact, it is the first time we see the horizon in the last couple of days. It is recommended that you top off the tank often on the Alaska Highway. We've been told that gas stations can be few and far in between. And we're a little past half a tank, so let's refuel. Apparently, this gas station requires a special card, but I think we passed the regular one just a few kilometers back, so we're going to backtrack to that one. Most of these stops also have RV parks, hotels, restaurants, convenience stores, propane, whatever you might need. So they are indeed very convenient. I am so happy we can finally see the surrounding landscape. That thick smoke was getting me kind of depressed. Still, getting patches of smoke here and there, but nothing compared to Dawson Creek. Let's take a break. This is called Mile 202 Red Stop. All right, lunch break. Cauliflower, rice, and tuna. Sometimes you have to improvise. That was a nice break. Now we're going to an abandoned state park. Or would it be actually a provincial park? We're in Canada. Let's see. The smoke is getting better, but now we've got bad weather coming soon. With each mile, we go farther north, more and more remote, isolated and closer to our goal of driving to the 49th state. Let's check this place out. Whoa. 
This is Prophet River Wayside. Wayside. This used to be a, a provincial park. It closed down a while back. But uh, actually, I, we were watching YouTube a couple of days ago, uh, YouTube, and uh, a couple stayed here. Actually, this is an airstrip. I don't know if it is in use, but it's, yeah, <laughs> it's here. By the way, bad weather coming. I have to, uh, I have to weatherproof the, oh, this is rather soft. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't get stuck here. This is very, very, very soft. Oh, that rain's coming for sure. By the way, the bugs are becoming larger and more abundant. So we must be getting close to Alaska. Yeah, that's a poor man's weatherproofing. Let's make sure we don't have too many bugs on the lens here. Actually, it's surprisingly clean. Yeah, next stop, Fort Nelson, which is gonna be the, the, the largest town we're gonna see for a while. We've been driving mostly north since we left, but after Fort Nelson, the road will take a more westerly route towards the northern Rocky Mountains. Those rain clouds are not showing in any of our weather apps. I wonder what's up with that. Maybe they don't have Doppler radars around here. There's an IGA and this may be our last large grocery store for a while, so let's resupply. Little did we know that when we were inside, all hell was breaking loose outside. Oh yeah, big downpour. I guess we're just gonna have to wait or make a run for it. I believe we're getting some hail. There is hail. Yes, indeed. I don't know, it might be sleet. I don't really know what the difference is. Well, this was certainly not part of the plan. I don't know if it is hail or sleet or a combination thereof, but well, at least we have groceries. We're not gonna starve out here in the in the tundra, and now we continue, and now we're gonna start riding west. There's this place that is supposed to have like the best um, cinnamon buns. We'll see if it is open. <laughs> oh, what an adventure! Never, never a dull day with RV life in a, in, in, in well in, in BC right now. Eventually in Alaska. Head north toward 50th Avenue South. Ooh. This is gonna be fun. I hope that the rooftop GoPro is still recording. Yeah, we happened to come to the wine gas station without a roof. There was a museum in town, but I don't think that's gonna happen today. All of a sudden, we've got sunshine once again, getting close to the Rockies, to the Northern Rockies. There they are. The mountains are definitely calling.
We're going to check out the Tetsa River Lodge here as a possible overnight spot. We're getting pretty tired at this point. They are also famous for having the best cinnamon rolls on the entire Alaska Highway, so why not? In typical Alaska Highway fashion, they also have gas, propane, convenience store, and pretty much anything you might need in a pinch, as there is nothing else around here. Let's find out about the RV park, and at the very least, let's get a cinnamon bun. This is what it looks like inside. We got a cinnamon roll, and that thing is huge. We're gonna eat it, and we're gonna drive 20 more miles to Summit Lake. And I think that's where, that's where we're gonna spend the night. <laughs> it's been a long day. But now, the scenic part of the road begins. The thing is, this particular RV park only has 15 amp electric. That's barely enough to run the microwave. And it is wooded, so Starlink won't work. So the lady in charge recommended Summit Lake Campground. It is dry camping, first come, first served, and we're hoping that it may be still early enough so that we can get a good sight. Now entering Stone Mountain Provincial Park. the sign Summit Lake Campground. There's a European RV, very cool, I wish we had more of those in America, easy to maneuver, no slides, and this seems like a nice sight right here. Okay, let's do it, it doesn't get much better than this. This one says available one or two nights, so let's see where we pay. Welcome to British Columbia Parks. This is Summit Lake, Stone Mountain Provincial Park. Let's see, camping fee $20 per night. Well, this was one of those moments when it was good to let serendipity take a hand at the wheel. And we ended up here at Stone Mountain Provincial Park. I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to, I'm allowed to fly the drone here or not, so I'm not going to. But um, yeah, this is uh, Summit Lake. And what a great campsite this is, right here on the lake. I mean, I was tired. We almost stayed at that RV park 20 minutes. I bet you this water is freezing. Actually, it's, it is not as cold as I was expecting. In any case, just one night here, and tomorrow we continue the journey to Alaska. We're just gonna relax, maybe have a glass of wine, get some to eat. What a great reward at the end of a long driving day. go and I didn't bring my inflatable kayak. Let's walk around the campground a little bit. There seems to be a trail that goes all the way to the top, but it is too late in the day to attempt that. And here's another trail. Tomorrow 
Tomorrow, the adventure continues. It's 10.15 p.m. Yeah, the days are long, and they're about to become infinite for a while. Good morning. It's 4.30 a.m. What a beautiful morning here at Summit Lake. The only thing, I don't know what's going on, but uh, we brought our battery down last night to about 20%, which is... No good. I don't know. We must have some parasitic uh, load somewhere in there. So I'm going to find out when quiet hours are because we may have to, to run the generator. I mean, the sun's out, but it's a very, very uh, low angle still. So we're only getting like 80 watts of power from the sun. And we're consuming like 400. So <laughs> this is the thing we've been keeping the, the inverter on all night to have, you know, Starlink in net. And Starlink is a power hub. Okay, quite, quite hours until 7 a.m. So. I mean, we're leaving soon, so I may not have to run the generator after all, but it is good to know I can. It is now past 9 a.m. and it is a beautiful day here at Summit Lake. We must get underway soon. It is almost summer solstice here, and the farther north we go, the longer the days. In fact, Last night, it never got completely dark. That's why they call it the land of the midnight sun. Well, today's gonna be a short drive. In just about two hours in total, we're gonna stop at a couple of places. And the first one is uh, was like our plan B for boondocking for last night. It's only like 30 minutes north of here, so let's go check it out. The farther north you go, the older the fuel pumps. I mean, I wish I could have shown you in action. This is one old pump. Mountains, hot springs, a signpost forest. Who knows what else we might find? Frost hits, potholes, gravel won't stop us. Alaska is on my mind. Hello there. On the Alcan, Alaska is on my mind. On the Alcan, Alaska is on my mind. On the Alcan. Remember Gone with the Winds when they used to be RVers? Well, them, along with Chris and G, and other early YouTubers were the ones who planted the seed in my mind, the irresistible desire to make this trip to Alaska. Yes, folks, this has been almost a decade in the making. Well, as I was saying, our next stop is the place where I originally intended to stay last night, the very spot where the wings stayed eight years ago. Yes, a lot of research has gone into this. I believe this might be it. One of these roads anyway, but I don't want to get stuck in there with the trailer and no turnaround, so I'm gonna park it here and explore on foot. Well, we just, uh, we just drove past that possible suitable boondocking spot here. It didn't seem suitable for trailer, so I'm just gonna walk. Yeah, this is one of the most beautiful parts here the Alaska Highway. Yeah, 
I knew we were getting to the good part. This seems to be it. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little bit of a tight turnaround for a trailer. But uh, if we had a small class C or a camper van, or, or even a small class A, look at this place. Yep, this is fantastic. What a great discovery right here right before the Racing River Bridge. I'm definitely keeping this one pinned on my map. Because someday we're gonna come back. Maybe a truck camper would be a great, a great way to, to get into spots like this as well. Uh, let's check this out. This might be another possible boondocking spot. We'll see. Check this out. Yeah, this would work. It's a little uneven, the ground, but other than that... Yeah, this lady, she does her dog. But you know, here, there's another fire pit. And, uh, and that might communicate with the one we just saw. So let's... Oh, this! This would be great for a camper van. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Imagine parking a Travato right here. Back it up. We open. We open the back doors and it's like, like the, you know, like those commercials. Might be hard to sleep, but I would love to do it someday. Actually, with a, with a little bit of skill, we could technically back Minitini up all the way out here, but as I said, with a little bit of skill and time, there's plenty of boondocking opportunities here on the Alaska Highway. Too bad we're a little bit of uh, power hogs and uh, yeah. <laughs> At some point today, if we don't find hookups, we're gonna have to turn on that generator. Well, the journey continues. Just keeps getting better and better. What an awesome scenic drive this is. Now arriving at Toad River. Like the other settlements we've seen, there's an RV park, gas station, lodge, restaurant, convenience store. These are called the Folded Mountains. Let's take a quick break here at this pullout and see our surroundings from a different perspective.
I love trees, of course. But it is incredible how much of the beautiful scenery is obstructed by them. That's the reason why I like to fly whenever possible, to see some of the things, some of the features we would miss otherwise. Let's continue. Alaska awaits, and we haven't even gotten to the Yukon Territory yet. We haven't seen much wildlife lately. Oh, wait! Hello, guys! Look at the little one. Ask, and you shall receive. And they're gone. Now approaching Moncho Lake. This is supposed to be very scenic, and of course, they have all kinds of services here. Yeah, this is spectacular. Let's check out the Strawberry Fields Campground, not because we want to stay here today, but for future reference. Hmm, lakefront sites. I could always get behind that. I really hope there's a turnaround at the end. And there is a turnaround. the butterfly, it's gonna land on my head. Sort of. Munch Lake will definitely require a revisit someday in the future. That would be the Northern Rockies Lodge. Ooh, there might be bison. Anyway, let's have a quick lunch here before we continue. Well, today it is a salad. With a view. Alert! Black bear alert! Oh, hello there! It is always a good day when you get to see wildlife, and today has not disappointed. That's a lot of bugs on that bear. Check it out! Bear decided to poop. Back on cue. Ah! 
Alright, that was enough wildlife for one day. Let's continue. We're actually very close to the place we want to stay at. That body of water in front of us is none other than the Liard River. And that's where we're going next. Leard Hot Springs. There's an overflow parking lot here on the left and a first-come, first-served provincial park here on the right, which is very wooded, so no good for starting. And since our battery is still kind of low, we're gonna try and get a full hookup site right here at the RV park. This is where we're gonna call it. We have driven roughly a third of the way to Delta Junction, 750 kilometers, and we still have a little over 1400 to go. On the next episode, we're going to enjoy the hot springs, leave our mark at the signpost forest, and continue on the most remote section of the Alaska Highway. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road. I'm riding, riding in